In Washington, we have a disease, or a syndrome rather. I call it the dinosaur syndrome. Big hearts, small brains. Unfortunately, it's a recurring problem. Year after year, bill after bill, day after day. In Washington, it is argued that you are more compassionate if you give away more of someone else's money. I would argue that true compassion is in giving your own money away. I would argue that truly rational policy is giving away money that you have. So it's one thing to give away other people's money. It's another thing to give away money that you don't even possess. We as a country have a $20 trillion debt. We borrow a million dollars every minute. And yet we are putting forward a bill to allocate $15 billion to those who are suffering under Harvey or from Harvey without paying for it, without finding the money anywhere, with just simply adding it to our tab, adding it to our $20 trillion bill. How do we get to $20 trillion in debt? Big hearts, small brains. Nobody has the courage to say, why don't we pay for it? Why don't we be legislators and stand up like men and women and say, let's set priorities. If it's a priority to help those in Texas, and I have great sympathy for those in Texas, my family is there, I have family members with two feet of water in their house, so I have great sympathy for those who are in need. But there's no reason to be foolish. We shouldn't just borrow the money. Why don't we take the money from something less important? My amendment, America First Amendment, would take the money from money that we were going to send to foreign countries. We send billions and billions of dollars to countries who hate us. We send billions and billions of dollars to countries who burn our flag. I think it's a very simple choice that when we're looking at helping those in need in our country, we quit sending money to other countries. What my amendment would do would be pay for the $15 billion in aid by taking it out of the foreign aid account. Who gets the money in the foreign aid account? What is it spent on? I'll give you a couple examples of what we spend our foreign aid on. We spent uh, billions of dollars, I think it's over $100 billion, building roads in Afghanistan, blowing up roads in Afghanistan, building schools, blowing up schools, and then rebuilding all of them. Sometimes we blow them up, sometimes someone else blows them up, but then we always go back and rebuild them. Well, what about rebuilding our country? Why don't, we, why don't we look at our country and rebuild our infrastructure, rebuild our roads? For those who are flooded in Texas, let's help them. But let's help them by not sending the money to Pakistan and to other countries that don't even like us. In the foreign aid account, we spent $273 million last year teaching people how to apply for more of our money. So it's not bad enough that they take your money and send it to foreign countries that don't even like us. We teach these people how to apply for more of our money. We had a televised cricket league we spent over a million dollars on in Afghanistan. Televised cricket league. Only problem, they don't really have any televisions. And why it's our obligation, why is the U.S. taxpayer asked to pay for a cricket league in Afghanistan? We spent $45 million on a natural gas gas station in Afghanistan. $45 million. It was estimated to cost a half a million, 86 times cost overruns. What does it serve up? Gasoline, natural gas. Who has a car that runs on natural gas in Afghanistan? Nobody. So we bought them cars. We bought them cars that run on natural gas. Then they had no money to buy the natural gas, so we gave them credit cards to buy the natural gas. That's where your money's going. If you want to help the people in Texas or those people who may be hurt in Florida, why don't we quit sending the money overseas? These are the people who chant death to America, and we send more money to them. We spent money on home mortgages in Nigeria. We're spending money on home mortgages in Nigeria. We spent money on tourism in Albania. This is one of my favorites. We spent money teaching people in Kenya how to use Facebook. All I'm asking is, why don't we stand up like men and women, like real legislators, and if we're going to have compassion for those in Texas, why don't we have the good wisdom not to just simply add it to our debt? 
in hysteria, everyone's hysterical, we must give, give, give someone else's money. But not only that, we must give, give, give money we don't have. We're going to destroy our country. There have been people who argue that our $20 trillion debt is the number one threat to our national security. So what I'm asking is, why don't we pay for this? Why don't we simply take some money that we were going to spend somewhere else for something not as valuable in another country, and why don't we spend it here? Because you realize what's going to happen. I will proffer this amendment, and in all likelihood, the swamp, the establishment will vote this down because they never want to cut a dime of spending. They're always compassionate. They have big hearts. They're willing to give away everybody else's money, but they're never, ever willing to pay for it. This is both parties, both Republican Party and Democrat Party. Watch the vote and see who is a conservative and who says we should pay for the aid for Harvey and who says, oh, no, we should add it to the tab. Where's the $15 billion going to come from? We this year are going to want run a $500 billion debt. There is no money. They're giving away your grandchildren's money to help people. And people will say, that's compassion. We're going to help people now. But we're stealing it from our kids' future. We're stealing it from the future and the soundness of our country. And we are threatening the very security of our country with this enormous and elaborate debt. Simply pay for it. Simply say, you know what? This year, we can't be so compassionate to people who are wanting to get health care in Cambodia. We have USAID money going to Cambodia to help them get cost-effective or lower-cost insurance. We couldn't even do anything with the health care in our country. We failed to act on it, and we're sending money to Cambodia to help them with their health care. Why don't we act here at home? Why don't we take care of our own problems before we think we can take care of everybody else's problems everywhere around the world? So we will get a chance to vote today. My amendment will come up shortly, and it will simply say, yes, we can. We are a big, rich country. We can help those in, in Texas. But we will pay for it by taking the money away from somewhere else in the budget that is less of a priority. We give hundreds of millions, really billions of dollars to Pakistan. How much do they like us? Sometimes they help us, but sometimes they harbor the enemy. Sometimes they harbor whole networks of people who are plotting to kill us. What do they think of Christianity in Pakistan? Asia Bibi's a Christian. She's been in jail for five years on death row for being a Christian. What do they think of helping us with bin Laden? They didn't raise a finger to help us with bin Laden. Bin Laden lived among them for years and years and years. When we finally got bin Laden, we got bin Laden with information from a doctor named Shaquille Afridi. What did Pakistan do to reward the doctor who helped us get bin Laden? Pakistan's got him locked up in life for life in prison. So, so really, we, we need to re-question whether this aid works at all to foreign countries, whether it's counterproductive, whether we have it in the first place, but we should also ask an important question. Maybe that aid ought to be better spent at home. Maybe we ought to start rebuilding our country instead of re always thinking we have to rebuild everybody else's country. I think this amendment is so easy to decide, and I think the American people are behind me on this amendment. And I think if we were to take this to a huge vote of the entire American public, I think 75 to 80 percent of the American public would say, you know what, let's take care of our problems at home. Let's don't send our money abroad. And I think we'd win this battle. But watch this vote, because in Washington, you'll see the opposite. You'll see three fourths of this body or more say, oh, no, we're not going to cut any spending to anyone. We could never cut foreign aid or welfare for foreign countries. We're just going to add it onto the tab. But I, for one, want to be a loud voice to say it's risking our country's future. It's risking the security of the United States to keep adding to a $20 trillion debt, no matter how good the cause is. And remember, the next time a politician tells you that they are so compassionate because they want to give away more of someone else's money, you ask them how much they gave of their own money if you want to judge their true compassion. Thank you.